welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the, is it the 18th or 19th? It's the 18th, yeah? 18th yeah. of September 2013. And um, this is a, a throwback show, meaning that Teachers Teaching Teachers, uh, some people here may not even know this, but Teachers Teaching Teachers started, um, I, vis I very clearly remember being on a, watching my sons play baseball and being on a, a Skype call um, with with teachers who were using youth voices and trying to plan curriculum together. That was like eight years ago, something like that, seven or eight years ago. And um, so, and we've done lots of other things since, but tonight I'm excited to say that we are once again talking about youth voices and talking about connecting on youth voices and getting things rolling here in the fall. Um, I was worried last week because there wasn't a lot of posts happening yet, but then on Monday morning there was this flood of uh, posts from three different places. One from um, a, te a Spanish teacher in, in the Bronx whose students posted in Spanish, um, even though their profiles indicate that their kids aren't necessarily That's Spanish great. speaking. So that was pretty nice. Um, and then um, there was uh, some, some, a couple of posts from, I think from your students, um, Joe. Uh, and there, and then a, a new school that's joining us from Austin, Texas, um, mm -hmm. also had some really interesting posts up. So cool stuff happening. Um, another teacher who we were getting on, a middle school teacher from Green Bay, Wisconsin, uh, 110 of her students have joined the site. So we're kind of excited about people signing up and doing things. Um, and so why don't we quickly go around and get some introductions as we go here. And Marina has joined us. Andrew, why don't you start us off? Just because your name starts with A, you always get to start. I'm sorry. Perfect. Although my last name starts with W-Y, so. That's right. OK. That's both ways, I guess. Um, Hi guys, my name's Andrew. I work as a community manager at Guru. Um, Guru is a platform for making digital playlists out of websites and um, visual resources, which teachers like Paul have used to perfect um, in creating interactive digital lessons. Um, been really excited to be involved with Youth Voices over the past year, see a lot of the interesting stuff that's been generated, and meet interesting teachers like you guys. So, looking forward to a new year of great conversations. Cool. Andrew, um, this weekend, the, the Maker Fair is in New York City, at, and um, I got a little table, and we're going to put up uh, Marina. You don't even know this yet, but Marina, there's a video with Marina and her fourth grade students talking about mm -hmm. letters to the next president, and a lot of the curriculum we did on that is on Guru. So it's my, cool. my attempt to reclaim some of the computer space there from the 3D printers for writing. <laughs> well, yeah, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop that into a thesis, by the way. Reclaiming <laughs> computers for writing. But I love maker stuff, and that's why I love being at the fair. But I love writing too. Anyway, so, sorry, what, you were going to interrupt me? Go, go ahead and try. Oh, don't worry about it. I was just saying, I really I want to see that. I want to see pictures from the maker fair. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, anyway, um, Chris Sloan, welcome. Hello, uh, my name is Chris Sloan and I teach English and Media at Judge Memorial High School English and Media at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, I've been using Youth Voices for a number of years, so I'm always excited to talk about it. And be specific about the students you're teaching and who will be on Youth Voices. Some of your some of your photo students who have already been on, I should have mentioned. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, some of my um, photography students are on there, and then I also teach AP English Language and Composition, so those students, uh, we just started today, um, kind of beginning, they haven't posted yet on Youth Voices, but that'll be coming tomorrow, you'll see a flurry of activity. Okay. Cool. So I think, so one of the, as I've been watching people who are active on the site, one of the interest groups that I see could start connecting our seniors. Do you have seniors this year? Your AP class is a senior class, right? Yeah. So that's cool. And um, Jim Nordlinger, who works with us in New York City, also has been given seniors. So I'm kind of thinking it'd be interesting for seniors in some way to think about some project together, which is, I hope, a nice introduction to 
Joe Paraviso. <laughs> well done, Ms. Paul. P. Well done. Yeah. Um, so Joe, I teach at Fremont High School in East Oakland, and I this is going to be my second year on Youth Voices. Uh, but this the teaching load I have is all seniors, and uh, half of them have they use voice they used Youth Voices last year. Um, and so they're very familiar. And then my other half is all fresh and brand new to Youth Voices. Um, so we see a lot but of... But they're, they're seniors also, the freshmen? They're seniors also, okay. yeah. yeah. Fresh seniors, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So the way we see Youth Voices now is that it, half of those kids are media academy students, and so I'd love to have them post a lot of their... Uh, publicize a lot of their work and talk about it. And then I, my other half are the architecture design students. And so they have a lot of graphic design work that they do. So to post that and just, just you know, keep pushing that the kids make their work authentic uh, and, and public. And what, what kind of graphic and design work do they do? Like what's they the physical? Are, uh -huh. So they, they have anything from designing magazine covers to designing their future dream home complete with, uh, I mean, they use AutoCAD to design it, and then this year, hopefully, they're going to start building the models. We'll get that equipment. We're crossing our fingers. Um, so that's what the, so they have multiple projects, and I can I could easily link you to the to the that teacher's website uh, for the class because there's a lot of great stuff that they post up there. What I have a math teacher who wants to base some of his math work around. Cool. One of the wonderful things about working at a new school is I get to play like across the curriculum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And he, one of the things he wants to do is is have our sixth and seventh graders design a house mm -hmm. um, and kind of work with the math around that. So I wonder if, and we can't necessarily do the, what you just said. What, what what was that program again? It was a designing AutoCAD. program. AutoCAD. Yeah, their yeah. AutoCAD program. Yeah. So we're not going to have that. But what if we communicated like what kind of house we'd want? That might be fun, right? Oh to, yeah, definitely. You know, so. They would love to. Yeah, and they're all seniors, so they're. A lot of that, we're using Youth Voices prim primarily uh, to do their field research. So they'll be posting mm -hmm. about all of their senior projects and their field work, each of them. So that'll be, you know, 90 kids posting about their senior research. Which they'll do all, uh, along the way, right? We, um, they have to blog weekly about the senior project, not mm -hmm. notwithstanding all the other stuff for English. So mm -hmm. I have them for two, two classes, basically. And one of the things I already saw them do is they looked for blogs about their topic. Is that right? They did, yeah, they did fun blog posting. So just to kind of get their feet wet with the research, what would it be like just to research something that you would actually be interested in? Um, so they're trying. So a lot of them haven't ever read blogs before. So this was a way to just get them to read, just see what it was all about. So I have that level, and I have the level of students that are just they're producing on their blogs now. So Marina, welcome. Hi. So tell us who you're oh. teaching. Tell us, how do you like your kids this year? I don't know. Tell us something. Oh. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Yes. Hi. You have a fourth um, grade again this year, I assume. And, yeah. And name um, your school and all that. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm a fourth grade teacher at um, in elementary school in the Bronx, and I have a really amazing group of kids this year. They are this special class called the community class and they've been together since first grade so they've literally been looped for second, third, fourth um, with just a change of teachers and the really cool thing is that the other two teachers they've had are like my very very good friends so they've had a consistent philosophy through their education too with the inquiry based learning um, and they're kind of like ripe for their writing. Their third grade teacher told me that she was there was a lot of struggles with their writing, but they're ready for it. And she was like, "This is going to be perfect for the, for you. You're going to get them on the computer and and do all this great stuff with them." So I'm very excited to work with them and get on Youth Voices for the first time ever <laughs> this year. Well, you've been on Kid Blog though, so yeah. you're somewhat familiar with using blogs. So mm -hmm. yeah. And and how have you you were gonna look into getting Google Docs? Did that happen or no? Or not yet. Not yet. Okay. It's been cool. it's been crazy the past week and a half just with okay. grabbing okay. anyone to get that started. How many kids are in that class? Um, thirty one. Thirty one. 
Yeah. Okay. It was 36 the first day of school. <laughs> Perfect attendance. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah, that's a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. But cool. Thanks. Um, and Sherry Edwards, great to have you with us. Um, and has been with Youth Voices in the past, and we're hoping she'll rejoin us. Could you introduce yourself and tell us about Nespelum? Am I, did I say that right? Yes. Close. It's Nespelum. Nespelum. Yep, you were okay. close. Yep. <laughs> so I teach on the uh, Colville Indian Reservation in Nespelum, Washington. It's about 14, 14 miles north of Grand Coulee Dam. I language arts to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. I have about 45 students all together. And yes, but in, I think it was in 2009 when I was in Youth Voices. Yeah, and yeah. the kids really enjoyed blogging. And our favorite thing is guru learning. And oh, really? So, <laughs> yeah, in fact, some of our kids' pictures were up there on the guru learning site for a little while. Yeah, so, that's the big. Yeah. Do the do the kid do the kids <laughs> make their own collections or how how do you do it? Um, well, we have a new science teacher this year. It's not that much into technology, but I'm mm -hmm. hoping to use it for language arts to get them to make their own um, collections. They've already did a little research. The sixth graders this year use a guru, so <clears throat> that's pretty there, good. I don't know who you're yeah, talking about. Like these days. But feel free to email me anytime um, if you have any questions or want to share any of the work that you're doing. Okay. We'd love to be in touch. All right. And Sherry, do you, are those mixed classes, 6, 7, 8? No. Mixed age? No. It's no. middle school, so I get them, you know, each period I get a, each block I get a new class. So I have 6th graders, start with 8th graders and 7th graders and 6th graders. So, so and we're a go ahead. Uh, well, we're a priority school, so um, means that we have all these coaches come in and tell us what to do. So um, everything I do, I need to kind of show that I meet those objectives. Because, but I think it's so important to be for our students to connect with others and to have authentic writing. So. That like use voices. Worry. What the, this priority yeah. is that like a worry thing? That's that like a wor somebody's gonna close worry you thing. Or, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it says we need to improve. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Okay. And we just lost. Well, she's coming back. Maybe. But when she comes back, we'll hear. So who would like to jump in with the? I mean, I've been already peppering this as uh, hopefully as an example of. Like just brainstorm ideas for what you, what kind of connections you want to do, what you're actually doing. We can help you think about what's what's happening. But Trisha's back. Trisha, hi. And her sound. Trisha, can you check your sound again? Oops. Well, she'll work on that. Don't know what to do for sure. So l let me throw that out again. I don't have a very specific. Let me see if anybody has some ideas they'd like to talk about um, for connecting between us. I mean, Sherry and I could just keep talking right now about, uh, since I'm now teaching middle school students, how we can connect our students. Um, and they're only two years older than Rena students. Or you guys could talk about seniors or whatever you want to do. How you want to do it. And Tricia, jump in whenever your sound works. Uh, you got to unmute yourself, Trish, or maybe. What? And then check your sound properties. Well, we'll get her in a second, I hope. Ideas. Go ahead. Who wants to jump in? Well, I guess I would ask a question that actually cuts across all the grades, and that is, you know, I think we're all kind of an inquiry approach group. You know, so how does that, how do you start things off um, with your Great crew question. every year? Testing. Anybody want to jump in? <laughs> well, I mean, I can talk about how I start things off. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. And then <laughs> Since I asked the question. Uh, you know, like kind of like Joe is talking about, um, 
that um, my students will be, they're seniors and they'll be um, kind of blogging research as we go. And so um, we'll do um, kind so of a... Chris, slow down a little bit for somebody who's not sure what you mean by that. I mean, just blow that right. sentence out. What's blogging research mean? Yeah. Well, um, so typically in, in high school English classes, you'll do like a um, research paper that extends weeks and maybe months, that kind of thing. So, um, like in that setting, what I'll do is I'll have them, like Joe was talking about, like once a week, um, they'll just kind of give an update on what they've learned, that kind of thing. Uh, and it's based on their inquiry questions. Um, so to start with, I guess, what I wanted them to do was, um, and we're only doing the first week this week, it was starting with those ten questions about yourself and your community and the world, uh, and then having them go try to find information, however they find it, um, to try to address that initial question. So mm -hmm. that's kind of how I start. So if I could jump on that, what we've been, what I, so we just split it in two, ten questions you have about yourself and ten about the world. Um, and uh, the, the idea is not original with us or anything. James A. Bean uh, came up with this, and it's a way he's organized um, middle school curriculum in the past, by the way. But um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know a better way to do it than that. Um, just to add to it a little bit, though, and I don't know if you do this or not, Chris, but we also have students go in and add five keywords next to each question. And um, what we've kind of thought about doing, and I wish I want to do this. <laughs> It works best then when we students kind of choose questions and put them on a strip somehow on paper and then group them and talk about the categories these questions are coming in so that, yeah, so that there's a process of developing themes around the question. Do you do any of that, Chris, or? Um, yeah, I guess I haven't formalized it enough. Um, so, I mean, it's more ad hoc connection. So I, I think I could probably do a little better job of that, uh, getting too. people, you know, to, because then there's this whole um, interesting conversation you can have around what I'm finding versus what you're finding about a similar kind of thing. So, yeah, and, and more information about this is, uh, is up at uh, youthvoices.net slash questions. It's a real easy way to kind of follow some of our thinking around that. Um, other people with, and, and I, I want to kind of, I've begun to distinguish, or not distinguish, but call that approach of starting with students' interests, interest-based education. You know, there's other words like connected learning and, and all that, which are all important and inquiry is important. But interest-based is, is very concrete for me because it really does say we're going to start with the students' interests and, and see where we can go with that. But just, mm -hmm. just say that. Joanna, do you have a joke? <laughs> Whatever. Do you, your kids start, oops, you might be muted. Do you, there you go. Do your kids have topics already or how does that work? You're still muted. Sorry. Mm. me. No, you're good. Oh, yeah. I, I don't Hi, know Jake. I'm... Jake, hey. I talked about you earlier about hoping to get your kids in bed and join us when they did. But anyway, welcome. Oh, hi. Introduce yeah. yourself as Joe's working on her sound there. Well, yeah, I'm, um, I'm Jake Jacobs. I work with Paul at New Directions, mm -hmm. and um, I, I also can't seem to get my uh, headphones working. Every time I plug it in, I can't hear anything, but... You're fine right now. Yep. Okay. Well, I'll just leave it like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I was excited to um, to uh, come on board here, and um, I see that we're we're just getting our laptops rolling at school, and um, you know the kids are just starting to get the hang of it. Um, so it's still new, but um, you know I'm sure Youth Voice is going to be a part of it, um, even in art. So we'll see how that goes. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit later. I think you're going to do some some sort of video connection with another art teacher as well. So um, 
Yeah. Yeah. On Friday, we're supposed. To, I'm supposed to do two Google Hangouts with other art teachers. One is in um, Ontario, and the other one is in Iowa. So we're. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, it's kind of experimental, but <laughs> but here goes nothing. So sound check, Joe. Can you talk? Is it, we don't have any sound. No. And are you there? Hmm. Okay. So, can you hear me, Paul? I can hear you, Trisha. Introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I'm sorry. I've been having some connectivity okay. issues. I work in the Bronx, New York. Um, and I've been working, well, my students were introduced a couple of years ago when they were in a journalism class. But this year I'd like to work with my um, seniors and juniors in my creative writing class and have them work on, just be a part of Youth Voices through through that medium, through creative writing. That's my plan this it year. Sounds cool. Yeah, I'm looking And your school that. is? It's in the Bronx, New York. It's High Leadership Charter School. Joe, how about now? Now can you hear me? We can hear you. Cool. And we'll get back to you, Trisha, but Joe, you were going to yeah, tell sure. us whether your kids have topics or how you get started. Oh, yeah, so, okay, so how we get started, um, I tell the kids that this is where they're going to document their research, so this is where they're going to be able to post their field work, so what their ideas are for um, how they're going to collect their own primary source data for their senior topics. Um, and so this is where they're going to be able to get that feedback from other peers, from the grown-ups. And we do the strip, what you're talking about, Paul, in, in that way where I group them by category because their topics are all social equity topics. So it's very easy to group all of the topics about, say, uh, health care reform and all of the topics about um, police and brutality, et cetera. So there's that part. And then I also tell them, you know, more employers these days are researching just your name and your social profile to see if you even have tech skills um, that they can that they can use in the work setting. So a lot of it they get a little bit juiced because they're thinking that yes, someone could Google me and find my blog, and here I've posted all of this academic work. Um, so that's how I kind of roll it out. It's really scary for some, um, especially my undocumented students. They they still think that they can get tracked, but. Um, other than that, they're, they're going to get into it. They'll have to blog twice a week, so mm -hmm. they'll get into it quickly. So, not to say more, but the, the young man, Mario, who just posted a, an amazing poem on Youth Voices, it's on the cover of Youth Voices, oh, cool. um, has the same issues. So, I, he, he's open about it. So you can, And you could read through his blog. He has mm -hmm. he an, an actually an, an amazing... Um, immigration story that's there, and he's, he's a really interesting writer. Um, so it'd be great to kind of connect him to. Okay. He's somebody we worked with this summer, but yeah, okay. and it's nice he's still posting even though there's no teacher he's working with at this point. Okay. But yeah, cool. um, so yeah, but but yeah, it's interesting. You know, I had um, my sixth graders. One of them was reticent to write today, and she's been writing on the computer for several days. We're only over just over a week going here, but one of the reasons she said it was hard for her to write was she she doesn't trust the computer, right? And <laughs> and what she meant was she wasn't sure where this information was going to, right? So yeah. so that's a that's a really interesting kind of um it's it's an interesting self awareness, but I think I personally forget that going public with all this stuff isn't the natural thing for everybody. So that would be a good question. How do you deal with that? <laughs> Any thoughts? Or is it a real problem? I don't know. It is a real problem, if I may join, jump go, in. Go, Trisha. Go um, because I remember my first student who I've talked about um, who initially she did not want to post on Youth Voices because for that same reason she didn't know who would read it um, and she was really hesitant to, to post anything initially. She eventually got over that once she saw other students 
once you saw the students posting once we went on the site, once we looked around. But it is a true, it's a true fear that students have. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things I do and haven't done yet with this young woman, and maybe should uh, already, is have them respond to somebody else, like so they can see what that's like from a responder's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. So Joe, even your kids in their topics, have you thought of searching just on Youth Voices for if anybody else has written about that there? Because at this point there's a pretty rich... Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, so yeah, they'll be in the lab tomorrow um, uh -huh. and they'll be doing that. Uh, so you'll see, <laughs> you'll see them comment to some of the Postings already there, but also they'll be collecting those mm -hmm. posts for themselves to kind of uh, it's as part of their pre research process. So for now, they're just kind of seeing what's out there, and one of the resources is all of the whole database of posts, um, which, yeah, everyone will see something related to their topic. Everyone's got a social justice topic of some kind. Cool. The teacher, and I, I apologize to her now, but in, um, I didn't look her name up, but in, um, Austin, who's having her students, the first project they're working on is a neighborhood study where they're they're mm -hmm. looking at their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Is there is there sort of out of school stuff that your students are doing too, given that it's a social yeah. justice project? Yeah. yeah. So all of their field work requires that they actually get out in the community. So they do have to go and you know interview the the clinic director. They do have to go and poll students. Um, online and you know physically so I mean they will have to do 20 hours of that and then so their blogs will be used as a way for them to document that process it's evidence for myself as the educator to I can see the process then everyone else that's going to be judging them at the end of the year can also see their process of how they went about collecting their data uh, so and it's it's they have to do it weekly so it's just they'll get into the groove of being metacognitive about their work it'll really help them later when they have to write the reflection piece of their paper they have all their postings for you know seven months uh, to write that. So I think that it'll it'll be really valuable. It's already valuable, but it's they'll still start to see uh, how mm -hmm. process writing uh, can be really effective. A great reflection tool. Do they do me? Do they record or do any kind of collection of that data with media? Yeah. That, so that could again, go up in the site uh -huh. too, or yeah. That's what uh -huh. I was saying earlier. Yeah. So my media students, we have they're going to have to do short films as their field research and so uh, they'll be posting like miniature clips like trailers to get people to see if they're going in the right direction with their films uh, and then the architecture students um, will I mean these are my those are my kids that I've had for the second year and so they too will be posting their process so a lot of them will be interviewing they'll be posting you know snippets to kind of uh, this is what I thought about when I interviewed this person and then they'll be getting feedback, hopefully, uh, from their peers about their field research. So, yes, they will be posting multimedia. I can keep going like this, but so, but <laughs> jump in with other thoughts if you, Marina. Do you want to talk about how you get started with fourth graders? Um, one of the things I do every year with the kids is. Um, I have them get like those little tiny notebooks, they're spiral, and they just flip like, I don't know, like newspaper reporters had in the old days. And, um, and we label those as like the wonder books, which I don't remember who came up with that idea, but I learned about it in a New York City writing project class. And um, I think that's very similar to the idea of coming up with the 10 questions about yourself um, and the world, because the kids are just starting out the year by writing out anything that they're wondering. Whether it's like, what's my mom doing while I'm, I'm here at school now to, you know, I'm wondering if there's aliens in outer space. Mm -hmm. um, and as certain things come up during the year, or as like our conversation turns in, um, probably like off of curriculum and like these little tidbits of real life come in, um, those are other opportunities for the kids to write down these like wonderings. And um, they have, like, their own basket in the classroom. And I really encourage the kids to bring them with them when we go to our library session so that they don't forget about the things that they were interested in. 
And now, as a yeah, so you when, know, when you go to the library, it doesn't become a traditional sort of what they think research should be. Is that no? Does I that happen or no? Okay. I try to instill in them as much as I can through like our writing projects that it should be a topic that they're interested in. That if I assign it to them, there's no drive. I think like to. I mean, some of them will do it because they care so much about getting a good grade or completing the work, or they have a really strong work ethic. But um, I've always tried to lay down the foundations, especially the past three years with with the, these kids at around this age of nine, ten, and eleven that. Um, if they're writing something persuasive, then it should be like what they care about, and if it's something informative, it should be what they want to learn about. Um, so I struggle along that line when I'm kind of given more of a a direction that I have to tell them what to do, you know, because it kind of conflicts with how I feel about it. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how I've I've gotten. I don't that. understand what conflicts. Well, you know, as we're changing this year, we're having some programs implemented in terms of our reading and writing instruction, and their scripted writing pieces. Um, the choice is a little bit more limited for the kids. I don't know how much freedom they will get in terms of their choices, because we actually still don't have the program. <laughs> we're kind of just making it up okay, until so it let's, gets in. Let's get started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But um, we have this time now. We have an open access. Um, in our computer lab, and that's what I'm going to use for the connected learning and um, get the kids to do more self self guided inquiry projects um, as a way for them to feel like they they do have some independence and freedom and the choice of what they want to learn about and write about. So that's a nice theme, and welcome Valerie Burton. Um, but I, I wanted to check in with Sherry. How do you start and is self-guided sort of inquiry project how you approach things too or does that feel comfortable to you? Oh yes it does. I just have to work within the parameters of what we're required to do but um, mm. um, for my eighth graders we started with um, there was a new website out with uh, high school students who had interviewed uh, people about 9-11 uh, and so they read those blog posts and then are doing some research because they of course don't know really anything about it so that's mm -hmm. how they're they're kind of finding out how people remember it and then what what happened and, and kind of talking about that and then the seventh graders um, we read oh it's a it's a Nancy Atwell program she starts out with a poem every day and so the first one was about you can write a poem about McDonald's and so we said well let's write a poem about anything so just kind of they're getting into just writing off the top of their heads with things like that and, and anyway so we're just Sherry, kind of starting ahead. out yeah. slow but no, on Fridays say. we have we have genius um, time so the students can in my class they can research anything and so I often start out with Angela's question what in the world hurts your heart and then they make a list of stuff and then they start their research in that so that's a nice story. but then so genius time yeah. you got to break that down I, I have a guess but go ahead what is yeah that? you know that's a time where the students can work on projects that are interested to them, which is what you're saying, interest-based. interest, interest based. And I introduced that to the school last year, but some of the teachers are not to take that time, and so I'm, I'm going to have to figure out a way to keep it for my class. I've been designing alternate schedules so that my kids can still participate in that, even if the other teachers don't want to do it so so it's just a time where they can you know can you, pursue their why, own why do you one think, kids why do you think the other teachers don't want to uh, because they have we kids for th I have them for three hours straight so that they can really you know whatever they need so if I can bring them in for small groups if they don't know how to how do I search term for this so I, you know I kind of lead them through 
you know, whatever it is that they need help with to do their projects. And sometimes they come with no idea, and so I have backup plans. So it's some work on my part, and so I'm not sure they want to have that. I don't know. Take that Finish initiative that or something. Fine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> take that initiative. To me, it's important that students are able to follow their own passions. If, you know, like one kid loves Chevy Impalas, so that's what he was researching. You know, <laughs> all they work. What kind of engines do they have? All this stuff. And if that's what they want to know, they're going to read. <laughs> so. And write about it. So. Jeff Wilhelm will be very happy to hear that. <laughs> His book has that in the title, right, about reading. Yeah. I, very interesting. I, I want to jump um, to Valerie. Is your sound working yet? She's, I hear you clicking. No? Nope. Valerie, can, we can't hear you yet. But that's cool. Trisha, how do you get started? Or what are you doing this year to get started? Um, what I'm hoping to do this year is have students. Well, they've go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, they they've um they've been working on identity, creative nonfiction essays, and so they've started with the story of their names. Um, we haven't set it up yet as far as going on to youth voices, but my plan is to have them share this project on youth voices and have other students spawn and provide feedback on their writing and develop a community based on exploring identity and what, what that means. Um, but I, when I start, I like to start with the questions that Youth Voices provides. Um, I think that the 10 questions about myself, 10 questions about my world is a really good place for students to start because they haven't Prior to, prior to being asked those questions, they have in it a lot of thought. And I think it helps to have them hear each other in the classroom also share the responses to these questions. So that's some of what I plan to do and, and how I like to start. And those 10 self-10 world questions, can, can, we, can I suggest that they get shared at least there be a link to them, um, but they get shared on the profile page of Youth Voices. So my kids, yes. my kids are doing three things, I'm, and I'm saying that sort of around. But but then there's also there also needs to be something that indicates. So when I go to the profile, I want to know where you, and I think our kids want to know. This kid's from Oakland. This kid's from Salt Lake City. This, you know, etc. Um, but they, it would also be useful to know what their current research topic is. So I wonder okay. if, if, does that make sense to ask kids to put that right at the top, too, of their profiles? So, you know, I'm from Fremont High School, and I'm studying, <laughs> uh, I don't know, what are they studying <laughs> right now? Mm -hmm. You know, healthcare in the community. Right, mm -hmm. I, it just feels like it would be. We're really catch as catch can, and it'd be nice. I always want to kind of get this a little more organized somehow, so we can kids can find each other mm -hmm. across geography, but with similar topics. But I like that idea. Of, yeah. mm -hmm. I like that idea yeah. because it's it's sort of like seeing who you are and what you what your plans are on the site. And it gives students the opportunity to. Is is there a pretty um, good search engine about in Youth Voices? Or? Say that again. Is Sharon? there, is, there Sorry, is the search pretty good in the Youth Voices? It is. It works. Yes, it works very well at this point. So that's another way. Yeah, and yeah. certainly people. But I got to warn you. You know, you'll find things from four years ago. But so that's one issue. Which isn't terrible, that you know. Sometimes that's fine, but just uh, you just need to be aware of that as as the kids are searching. I, I I wanted to draw Andrew. I wanted to know if we could take notes for you too, or are you taking notes? So identity and building a profile and and that kind of stuff would be a nice collection. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's been done or 
Like if I went to Guru and put identity in, what would happen? <laughs> um, that's a good question. We can try that now. Because that is the that is the way a lot of English teachers start out. So when you think yeah. about English curriculum, I keep giving you guys feedback. It's not about gerunds and adjectives, you know. It's oh, absolutely, about, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's about it's about these big issues. But yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. You you're allowed to talk. Okay. Sorry. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I obviously don't have a classroom that I can tell you guys good stories from, but it's been great hearing your stories. So, while well, you bring up a good point about curriculum, what English curriculum means in Guru. Mm -hmm. So obviously the easiest place for us to start was with the sort of boring gerunds and that is where we started. If you go to Guru and you look for English materials, you'll find stuff on, you know, proper nouns. But uh, we're still finding our way into the more, um, you know, the interest-based subjects and the really meaty humanity subjects. And that's something that there's not really a roadmap for at this point, so it's really been, I'll build collections based on things that I find interesting. Paul, I know you're building collections based on um, uh, subjects that grab your students and are relevant for youth voices. And that's really been the main source of it so far. Um, and I mean, I think for the moment that's the way it's going to be. It's going to be based on what people are interested in. They're going to build curriculum around it, and that'll percolate its way down, and that's, I think, probably the best way for it to happen because if we just had some guy in Guru um, go out there and try and build Make curriculum it, for every interesting thing out there, it probably wouldn't be as good as uh, the stuff that you're making. Um, so at the moment, I don't think you find anything on identity in Guru, but I would love to challenge you guys to build something interesting, build a collection and share it with the rest of us um, and let it uh, percolate out through the rest of the community. And the students can do that too, right? I mean, so Absolutely. as they as yeah. they develop their questions, they can start thinking about collections, and that process is a is a really interesting reading experience of what what would I collect for other people to read around this topic? Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, yeah, it's, it's a form of digital storytelling, really. I mean. You're finding these voices that are already out there, or you know, you can contribute your own materials as well. But by going out there and curating resources and finding what's been said by other people, you're forming your own opinion in the same process. And the end product, the collection, the playlist of resources that you put together, that if it's well done, it's really a powerful representation of your own voice, and also of the learning experience that you had to get to that voice. Mm -hmm. Jake. Do you want to? Would you talk a little bit about how curation fits into your curriculum? Because when I've been pushing Jake to come up with uh, what are they called? <laughs> Learning competencies around art. Um, curation is one of them, and it's not just that. So, and it's part of the creative process, right? Is that yeah, um, especially with the with using the the new laptops, um, the kids were just you know automatic. Um, you know, in wanting to go out on Google Images and um, find um, designs and um, save them to the drive. I mean, I almost didn't even have to give them instructions. So we were doing um, uh, we were doing something called ugly art, <laughs> where we were um, drawing ugly faces, and um, I wanted them to go out and uh, collect. Some portraits that were car you know cartoons or drawings, but you know they were they were meant to be ugly, and sometimes it was even um, faces that were photoshopped. And um, I asked kids to go out online and and collect five images, and um, you know they were they had collected ten before I knew it, um, you know and. A lot of them, you know, sometimes they were laughing and cracking up and calling each other over, and um, I, I told them, you know, you have, you know, you should share it online so that we don't have to walk around the room anymore. You know, you, it, it could be, you know, just as fast, if not faster, if you share the images, you know, through the, um, yeah, through the mail so, system. So Andrew, there's a collection, ugly art. Ugly art. <laughs> I want to see that one. 
<laughs> uh, Seriously, yeah. it's not a name that it's a name that will grab some attention at least. If you make that one, I'll see if I can feature it on the front page. Okay, <laughs> that's a deal. <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, I I definitely wanted to make curation a big part of my course, um, so that. But from um, an artist's point of view, why is curation part of the creative process? Well, it's it's a real help for kids that are not comfortable drawing. Um, all on their own, and um, it also, I mean, there's a there's a major career in the art field with curation. I mean, yeah, you know, I've heard some, of those. Sometimes the dealers are the ones that make all the money, and the artist, you know, only gets a percentage. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you, if if you have an eye for a curation, um, it's great. Um, if you guys all remember MySpace, I think that was kind of like a you know, a social media site where everybody kind of used to just curate, you know, used to just collect uh, links and pictures and stuff, so... So, Jack, um, I, I, I just want to say, I want to move it back to English for a second, or research, more mm -hmm. humanities research. And, and I just think that part of it is developing that eye and understanding what the forms are that you could use, and I think that happens when we have kids do research too. It's not just about finding information, it's also about seeing how the information is presented in different ways. And I think kind of being conscious about that with kids would be a really interesting thing to do. So that one of the things, Guru or some other way to collect your research over time, you could go back and say, you know, okay, so I could write a series of poems about this topic, or I could make a video, or, you know, I think finding examples like that is, a, is an interesting thing. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, oh, or, or you could just explain why why did you pick that one, you know, and then other kids can comment, I mean, you know, why that one, what is it about that one? And uh, they say pictures worth a thousand words, right? So, you know, you can have the kids write a, um, a caption under each, you know, choice, and explain why they picked it, and you know, I mean, you could you could just do forever just on, you know, their their curation alone. Yeah, I, I think curation is one of the most direct routes to metacognition that there is. Is that's really what they're engaging in when they're curating. They're trying to figure out. They're looking at it from the opposite perspective that they're used to. Right. Yeah. And if they're actually curating and not just grabbing stuff, right? Right. Exactly. If they're, if they're being critical about it. Yeah, yeah. Valerie, can you get in yet? Okay, Val. I don't know. <laughs> Valerie is hoping to join us this year. She's going to get some computers, and uh, she's shaking her head yes, and she's working on her sound right now. <laughs> so. Let's um. I I've, uh, I hope I haven't dominated. But other other thoughts, other projects, other ideas for making connections that people want to bring up. Uh, one thing. One thing I toss out is that you know my photographers do also um, post stuff into the Youth Voices uh, Flickr pool, so you know they're always um, open for people. Um, using um, their work to illustrate their photography. So that's another way to connect, I think, is through other media. And um, I just dropped those, the link to the youth. And any students, any one of your students, too, could, uh, if you've got some photographers or people who just snap something interesting with the phone that day, um, you know, they could uh, join the Youth Voices Flickr group and um, post stuff there. Mm -hmm. Jake is actually great at um, taking pictures of everything and, and so forth. Yes, yeah, so that would be interesting to do. The, um, and when you post something on Youth Voices, you are now required to um, put an image up with it. And teaching kids to use Creative Commons images um, at, at least, and hopefully images that are in the, uh, the Youth Voices Flickr pool is a great thing to do. So when you're I don't know if you've noticed it yet, but when you're post posting a discussion post, there is a link to the Youth Voices Flickr pool. So going there, downloading an image from there, and then uploading that with your with your um, post would be a great thing to do. Um, the other thing is, just so you know, we can make uh, trusted students editors. Um, what it means is that they can edit anybody's um, piece. 
so that if somebody puts up a piece of clip art and they can, you could have a group of, you could have a few kids be editors on the site and say, I, I think we could find a better picture taken by some one of a youth voices photographer, right? And, and so let's let's put that up with this image as well. So we could we could mess with that as well. So if you want to do that, let me know. I mean, just let me know who the students are, and we can make them editors of the site as well. Um, they can't do damage to the site. They can just edit other people's stuff. Um, so, um, other thoughts? Yeah. One other thing. Um, when it uh, comes to um, pictures and curation, is that. Uh, is uh, using filters is great, and it's a way for kids to kind of interact. If um, you know, if you know, you can kind of uh, set them up. If if you do this as an activity, it could be interesting. Like if you have every kid collect ten pictures of you know on a theme, and then um, you know you could ask them about why they pick those. You could you could then take um, the you know tell the kids that they all have to pick picks from the other kids sets and so that they'll have a smaller set which is you know um, curated from the curation you know what I mean and um, then 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 the filters are great now too with um, those those programs like Instagram and uh, you know you put it make it you make it look like vintage photo or you make it look darker or you know you're vignetting it so um, I love having the kids play around with that and then you know, saving a version and seeing them side by side with each other, you know, with the filter and without, so you can mm -hmm. um, you can have kids interacting with images even if they're, you know, not comfortable drawing or if they weren't the one that took the picture or anything. And by the way, there's no limit on Youth Voices. So if you're wondering about where you can do this, there are lots of places you can do it, but on Youth Voices there's no limit to how many images you can put up. So you can put up a whole slide um, <laughs> show, and what you, you, you click on each one, and the next one pops up, um, and you, you get little thumbnails of all of them um, at the top of of the post. So that's that would be a, a way to do that. Um, let's go. Cool ideas. Um, other thoughts? Oh, I, you know what? Bef before we get too far, I, there are a lot of English too far. Yeah, we're at yeah. the <laughs> I did want to ask about literature. Um, and and here's a here's another one to ask because Joe I think was it was it your class last year or was it the 11th graders who read Down These Mean Streets is that I right love, Yeah, so my seniors yeah. now they read yeah right and and I threw together a sort of inquiry uh, a guru mm -hmm. so there is a guru collection around mm -hmm. Down These Mean Streets um, the um, but I just wondered how does literature fit in with this interest based um, yeah. This interspace inter inquiry research project the kids are doing. Does anyone want to? How think does about lit that? fit in? Like, yeah. what are they? What, what are they reading? Or I, is that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> look, look. When you go to a party and you say you're an English teacher, everybody says, "Well, what are they reading?" Right. So I'm not asking yeah. that, but <laughs> because I really do think things have shifted uh, mm -hmm. around all of that. I don't think our mm -hmm. personally, I don't think English should be organized around the literature we're reading. Mm -hmm. um, it should be more organized around what we've been talking about tonight, um, right. interacting with each other, interacting with interest-based yeah. inquiry projects. But but there is still room for reading literature. Mm -hmm. right? so, oh yeah, but yeah. that's also that's also the beauty of the web, right? They can read so many things online and curate that that as well. So what what the interest-based online yada yada has done is, is it's allowed the kids yada, to yada. be able to... Yada yada, I like to, that. That's, <laughs> yeah, that. that. So. Um, they can, you know, they're all going to have to create a guru collection as part of their their work. Mm -hmm. So in that collection, they're going to have their articles they're going to have that they've read mm -hmm. online. And we have, you know, huge research databases that our district is signed up to that the kids access the print. But then there's a lot, I put a lot of emphasis on the non-print and the and, and just because the the whole idea of text has changed so uh, or is evolving so uh, an interview online is just as valuable as a transcription of an interview that they you know can read so for a lot of my students I'm just finding that the the there's literature um, but when you're working with English language learners to be able to expand the notion of literature to the non-print text I mean that 
they'll read enough for like uh, like enough of their articles. That's why I just feel like the 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 stuff they can collect will be equally valuable. So yeah, even the nature of English has changed in English classes. This is not what I was doing when I was a student at all. Chris, do you want to defend literature? Um, not well, defend. Like yeah. No, talk I like about how it fits. Yeah. yeah, I like what Joe's saying about um, you know the expanded definition of what it means to read. Um, but part of uh, also what we'll do is um, I have you know now back to the more traditional canon. Like there's stuff that we'll read in class as a group. Mm -hmm. um, but then I gave them, because um, it's an AP class I teach, I gave them this list of, uh, you know, somebody from College Board said, you know, these would be good books to read for college-bound seniors. And there's, and it's a pretty interesting list. It's not all a bunch of, you know, the usual suspects. Uh, and then I had them, uh, from this list of about 100, I had them just choose something to read. And, and so in between books right now, they're, they're reading a lot of different things. But I think, you know, if they're not interested, they're switching books. So somewhere fairly soon, what I'll have them do is uh, answer the question, not only what does the book make me think of, no, not only what do I think about the book, but what does the book make me think about? And that could work for any text. But then that's um, that opens up to a lot of um, directions that they could go. Because really, the book could make me think of a lot of things that really are seemingly unrelated. And related to their inquiry topics or not? Um, they may or may not be. Right now, it's um, they're just reading um, supposedly good books, and um, <laughs> you know, uh, and then they'll just uh, we'll see where that goes. If that makes them, maybe it leads to another inquiry topic or interest-driven topic, or maybe it doesn't. We'll see. That would also be a nice field on the profile, right? Like, what book am I reading right uh -huh. now? Yeah. But, yeah. Mm, that's interesting. But because I certainly kind of go the same way you are with and and there is a channel on Youth Voices called Book Talk where, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a um our one of our colleagues, Shantanu, has the only thing he does on Youth Voices is is um every week kids post their blog about the book they're reading, right? But and they so are sometimes interesting, sometimes not, I gotta say. But, you know, so I'm not convinced that's the best way to go, but certainly there's room for that and and I guess I'm happy I'm I'm happy when when the when I know a kid's inquiry and then I can think of a book to suggest to him or her of uh, that fits that inquiry. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Um but it like you just said, sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. I guess. Is everyone saying that's okay? Or, or should we all be reading the same books? Sherry, what do you do? Do you have independent reading books? or? Um, in We have two reading teachers that teach all the class. And in, in one class, they read from uh, the language of literature, which is a really good basal anthology. But in my room, they choose their own books to read. And so whatever I'm teaching about reading, then they apply it to that. And then we're going to take part in the global... I don't know how we all found each other, but go ahead. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the global read aloud, and uh, we're reading Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper. And then that gives us a common language to talk about it whenever we're doing What's our the, own writing. Or what is the global read aloud? Reading another book, that? it gives us a common place to talk about. What is that? The, uh, the one we're reading is called Out of My Mind by Sharon Draper. It's mm -hmm. about, uh, it's written from the person, uh, the narrator's uh, person as, uh, she has cerebral palsy. So it's, she can understand everything from when she was young, but nobody could understand her and how she was helped. And it's a, it's a great, I haven't finished it yet, so <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but it sounds great. I thought my kids would really appreciate it. So, and just checking up. checking on this question, Marina, how do you deal with literature and everything else you have to do? Um, we also have independent reading blocks um, during our day, and the children read um, an independent book. Usually, it's supposed to be a leveled book, but it can also be something chosen by interest. Um, nonfiction, different genres, things like that. Yeah, I dared to say to an evaluator that interest trumps levels. 
books. But but she agreed. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. um, but connecting into the discussion, I also do a read aloud all the time. And the book that I started out with this year is the book that won the Newbery Award this year, um, The One and Only Ivan um, by Catherine Applegate. And um, it's about um, a gorilla who is living in captivity in this kind of mall zoo arcade thing. Uh, it's written from his perspective and it's really got the kids asking a lot of questions about you know how are animals ending up in these in, in zoos and situations like this or things mm -hmm. like um, you know, swimming far with the dolphins. Zoo, so could, yeah. so it, it's leading into bigger topics and it's definitely challenging certain mm -hmm. ideas they have I think about those things they don't think about so deeply. Mm -hmm. And so very quickly, Trisha, you're, you're, you've talked about using this with your creative writing classes, right? Yes. Using youth voices. But yes. are they also reading or? We are reading along the way, but we're not reading one text. We're reading as um, like author studies um, in the craft. One so of the books they're choosing an author and reading a couple books by the same author? No, we're reading excerpts from different authors on what their writing test is. For example, Stephen King's On Writing Well. I see. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. Uh -huh. cool. And Francine Crowe's reading like a writer. So books by writers on writing. Excerpts from those. Mm -hmm. There's another collection there, Andrew. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Valerie, uh, we would love to hear what you're doing too, and you got to get your stuff fixed, man, so you can uh, talk to us. I'm just messing with you a little bit, but I'm 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 thrilled to read the email that you're going to be joining us again. I'm really happy to hear that. Yes. <laughs> okay. She's making all <laughs> sorts of symbols with her hands. I don't. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, we should we should all give each other a break. I I came home very tired, but but also in, in really happy that um, I'd be talking with teachers tonight, and it's really it's, it it does give us all energy, I think, to connect. And so, thank you all for um, for helping us do that. Um, there is if in PDPU there is a study group where we do collect. So Youth Voices Study Group and PDPU join up there. We do collect, and, and I put it, and, and there'll be a link, um, just like how-tos. Um, right before the show started, Sherry was asking uh, to be reminded how to get her students in. Um, send me an email at allisonpr at gmail.com, um, and I'll send you back a database that you fill in and we'll help you get your students in if you don't want to do it mm -hmm. yourself. We're all happy to do that. Karen Fastenpower is helping us do that as well. So mm -hmm. all of us can help each other do all this. And just to, to hint, and Jake, Jake and I have been talking about um, online art and physical art, so that's something we could talk about more. But making their icons um, real early on is something that's been an interesting process too and would be another way to kind of get started, um, having kids create something to represent themselves. But I will shut up after I say that. And, and, and I was <laughs> trying to close out. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Thank you. I um, want to say that um, we do broadcast here every Wednesday night over the EdTech Talk channel of the World Bridges Network. Um, and uh, once Jake and his other art teachers get something going, it looks like it's going to be happening on Fridays during the day, Eastern Time. But let, I will let you know how all that turns out, too. And it'd be, it'd be cool if, if others of us could kind of figure out how to Skype and or you know, communicate this way on, on Google+. Plus. So I'm going to hang up. So let's uh, keep talking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I should have mentioned Jeff Lebo thank. and Dave Cormier, there, by the way. <laughs> Always do that. But thank you, guys. Thanks. Good night. Thanks. Bye.